Welcome to the class on reinforcement learning and artificial neural networks. This video introduces the elements of classic reinforcement learning. And these elements are states, actions, rewards. Now, what do you mean by this? Suppose we put our animal into this environment, it starts to explore and it walks around, it explores different states and finally it finds the reward and then later you put it back and it will go much more directly towards the reward site so what are the elements well you have to discretize the state space you have to discretize discretize the environment so now we have discrete states and in these states we can make transitions and these transitions have some freedom because for example, here you could have decided to go east, to go south, to go west, to go north, but you decided to go south. And finally, you find the reward location. So the elements are, we have discrete states, we also have discrete actions, and then we have sparse rewards. Why do I say sparse rewards? because on most transitions there are no rewards. The reward is just at the very end. So let's try to put a little bit more formal math on this. So let me distinguish the old state, which I call S, from the new state that's reached after taking the action. And the actions, there are several actions here. For example, this could mean action A1 could mean go north, action A2 could mean go east, and so forth. And so for one of these elementary transitions, we would have a transition from one state to the next using action east, action A2. So formally, I can write this as a transition from a state S to a state S prime under action A2. The actions I try to write in green and I, the states I usually write with a circle, the actions I write with a rectangle around them. And then there are several of these transitions. So we continue south and south and south, and then we turn towards the West. Now we have to distinguish between a general notation where we have just states S and S prime and the notation where we say this is my current state at time t. So this index t is my current state. For example, these all of these have been states in the past and my current state is this one here and now I decide to turn left to go to go west and that's my action then uh, that would be action a4 okay so and this is my current state at time t st and now i can also say that this is my action at time t my action A4 is the action at time T. And then I can say, what's the current reward? And actually here I get a reward. However, rewards are sparse. In most cases, I will have no reward. Most transitions have zero reward. So here it's only this final transition from my state at time T S t to the state S time at time t plus one that gives me the reward. And now I have to distinguish between the reward I get at time t, which is the reward noted RT, and the mean reward for this transition. Imagine that the experimentalist that sets up the environment sometimes puts a reward at this location here but sometimes he does not and then the mean reward is the average over the cases where you make this transition and you find the reward 
and the average and you average over these dates we'll make the same transition but you don't find re the reward so we also have this notion of a mean reward for this action a and for the transition from state s to s prime this i said we have discrete states we have the previous state or the old state and then we have the new state and we say the current state is st and now often the state space really is continuous but then we have to decide what we define as a state now let me say a state you should when you define states you should watch out that a state corresponds to a well-defined situation to the current configuration so it's a generalized notion of location of the actor in an environment and to make this notion clear let's consider this famous example this example is called the acrobat and uh, it's you think of a little arm it has two joints this is the shoulder and it's free to move around the shoulder that gives the angle theta one and it has a second joint the elbow and again it's free to move around the elbow and then this is the tip of the hand and uh, the idea is now you want to put this into movement and to do that you have to apply a force a force in a rotational system is called a torque and the only torque you can apply is at this location here there's no torque torque to be applied at the shoulder and so you have to swing it up and you only get the reward once you are above this line here once the tip is above this line okay so the state space really is continuous but now let's discretize so how can we discretize let's make it simple let's suppose i have five states per dimension five states per dimension and then how many states are in, are there in total five or 25 or 125 or 625 please pause the video for a moment and think and then i will give the answer and i give the answer now the answer is 625 so why 625 well you may say i have only two torques uh, sorry you may say i have only two angles the angle theta one here and the angle theta two here but then you have to remember your physics physics tells you the state of the system is described by the position and the speed same for this rotational system the state of the system is described by the angle and then the change the speed of change of this angle and that is true for theta one and theta two. So I have theta one, I have theta two, I have the derivative of theta one, I have the derivative of theta two, that makes four dimensions. I have five states per dimension, so I arrive at 625 states. So the point here is, first, even in a simple system, you have quickly many states. And the second is, well a state is not sometimes not all not exactly what you might think it is at first sight because there are hidden dimensions and so why do we have to take the speed into account well because it makes a difference whether you are currently during an upward movement and you and you apply the torque here where you should apply it and then applying a torque in this direction will actually help the upward movement uh, further but if you are in the upward move but if you're in a downward movement and you apply the upward torque then you actually slow down the movement so the effects are very different so it's really important that you take all the dimensions of the system into account 
And here's the result of this Acrobat simulation with a reinforcement learning algorithm. We have here the number of steps on the vertical axis that it takes to reach this line above the shoulder, that the tip of the hand has to reach this line, and it takes a thousand or more steps in the first episode. And why is that? Because first episode is just random. But then as you continue, you go down in time, and at episode number 400, for example, you are really quick. It's just less, clearly less than 100 actions to reach the tip above the goal line. And here is how this works. You really have to build up momentum. You have to build up the swing. First, you apply the torque such that the elbow moves out. And then with this as a new position, you apply torque so that the, the, the elbow turns in the other direction. And then you continue. And at some point, you have this position. You apply again, again torque to, to reach this position. And starting from this position, you continue. And finally, you have this nice situation where the tip reaches, reaches the goal line. Summary, there can be many states. And often you need to discretize first. Uh, first. So this discretization is an artificial, artificial step. Next week we will try to model directly in the continuum. But all the classic approaches to reinforcement learning have been working with discrete states. And so we have discrete states, and then we have discrete actions that connect between these states. And then we have occasional rewards, and we need to distinguish between the reward in a certain moment, the reward at time t, from the mean reward or expected reward that you get for this transition, a transition that starts at state s, ends up in a state s prime under the action, under the action moving moving to the left, moving to the west. And this is where you get the reward in this uh, specific scenario.